Maths is not fun. Well, I, Makwela Namraka, is here to show you that Maths is just a fun challenge. It is as easy as Y equals to LX plus C. And for those of you who didn't know, it is as easy as a straight line. So right now, it is the time for you to grab a paper, a pen, and a calculator and come learn Maths with me. Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Learn Maths with me on a hashtag Maths Tuesday. So guys, in today's episode of Learn Maths with me, we'll be doing the topic of factorization. Oh yes, we are introducing a new topic, which is factorization. As you know that factorization has many parts, so I'll just be breaking them down into different videos. So in today's video, we'll be doing factorization by taking out the common factor. Oh yes. So guys, as you've seen in the previous video, we were doing distributive property in which we had something like this and then we... We simplified it using the distributive property if you watch the video <laughs> so we simplified it using distributive property so note that factorization is the reverse of expansion so we have expanded this expression using distributive property now we have to take this expanded form and take it back to the expression using factorization how will you do this so i'm going to show you first with this with this um uh, question which we expanded using distributive property and then bring along questions in which we'll solve together using factorization by taking out the common factor so we're going to look uh when Taking out the common factor, we take out the highest common factor of numbers and variables. So guys, we have to find the highest common factor. How are you going to find the highest common factor? By looking for factors of 15, factors of 10, factors of 25. So we're going to start with numbers first. So we're going to start with factors of 15, factors of 10, factors of 25 please note that this is your side work they do not like need to see it when you're finding your answer unless they have instructed you to show how you find the highest common factors so what are factors of 15 factors and like numbers that can fit in the number fit in the number which you <laughs> fit in those numbers without leaving a remainder I hope you understand that. And then which first number fits into 15 without leaving a remainder? It's 1. Then secondly, does 2 fit into 15? Yes, it does, but it leaves a remainder, meaning that we cannot consider it as a factor of 15. And then we calculate 3, yes. And then 5. What else? Hmm. And then last one, 15. So 1 fits into 15 without leaving a remainder, 3 fits into 15 without leaving a remainder, 5 fits into 15 without leaving a remainder, and 15 fits into 15 without leaving a remainder. So let's move on to factors of 10. It's 1, 2, 5, and 10. Uh, I really hope you understand how I found that. 1 fits into 10 without leaving a remainder. 2 fits into 10 without leaving a remainder, 5 fits into 10 without leaving a remainder, and 10 fits into 10 without leaving a remainder. Now we move to the last one, which is 25. We have 1. Uh, does 2 fit into 25? Nope. We have 3. Does 3 fit? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. 21, 24. No, it doesn't. Then we have 5. And then we have, uh, I think the last one has to be 25, that's all. Yeah, I think that's all. <laughs> so we're going to check which is common into the three numbers, like which factor is common into the three numbers. We have, is one common? Yes, one is common. One is common, one is common, one is common. Do we have three into factors of 10? Nope. 
3 into factors of 25. Nope. We have 5. We have 5. We have 5. We have 5. And it looks like the factors which are common are 1 and 5. But which one is the highest? H, C, F. Which one is the highest? It's 5. Meaning that we are going to take 5 as our highest common factor. What are we going to do? We are going to put it outside. We're going to write it down, right? Which will be outside the bracket. And then we're moving to the variables. So my teacher advised us to take the the least variable. It's the highest common variable. Uh, I'm saying so because as you can see, uh, at 15x cubed, we have 3x's. And then at this second term, x squared, we have 2 x's and then this last term we have one x so which x's are common only one x is common into the three terms so that's why my teacher said the least exponent the least va the the variable with the least exponent is the highest common factor i really hope you understand that or should i repeat it again my teacher said to us that the least uh, the variable with the least exponent is the highest common factor. So which variable here has the least exponent is x. Meaning that our highest common factor of variables is x. So is there something else we have to check? Nope. Then we are going to open the bracket. So we are going to check 15 divided by I carry you want to see what's left. You cannot write those numbers the way they are because this 5x will be distributed among them. Meaning that like, <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but you have to, in the bracket, you, you have to write down what is left after you took out 5, 5x. Oh yes, now it makes sense. In the bracket, you write down what is left after you took out the 5x so you're, you're basically going to start with the numbers 15 divided by 5 you are left with 3 then in x cubed divided by x so you know when you divide um when you divide variables of the same base you keep the base and then minus the exponents so you're going to keep your base 3 minus 1, you know that when a variable doesn't have an exponent, the exponent is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. So on the first term, you are left with only 3x squared. So the second term, you are going to keep your minus sign. Five, 10 divided by 5, it's 2x squared divided by x, it's x why because the exponent minus each other two minus one it's exponent one i can just write it as x as as x without writing the one because we know that when a variable doesn't have an exponent it is one and then we're moving to the last to the last term 25 divided by five oh we're going to put down our plus sign sorry 25 divided by five it's going to be 5 and then x divided by x uh, we're going to have the exponent minusing each other 1 minus 1 it's 0 and you know that <laughs> I feel like I'm putting so many information but I know you understand me so you know that when you have a number or a variable to the power 0 that 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 term becomes one so it's going to it's going to just be useless to write it down because it's going to be five times one i can you know that in between 25 and x it's a multiplication sign here so it's going to be five times one which is just going to be five then we close our bracket can you see how simple that was we we took the expanded form and brought it back to the expression using what factorization so right now i'm just going to take a, a questions that i've written down and then we're going to solve them together i really hope you understood how 
I explained here and you'll be able to understand more as I continue with other questions. So I got my questions. This will be a paper where I will just be doing my rough work or where I'll just be do I'll be calculating my factors, highest common factors, so that I don't mess up the answer sheet. So so we're going to start with the first uh first expression which is a five y plus ten y plus twenty z. So we're going to check. We're going to first look at this, find the factors of 5, find the factors of 10, find the factors of 20, and then take out the highest common factor. So we're going to use our paper where we do our rough work. Then we start factors of 5, factors of 10, factors of 20. So we know that factors of 5 are 1. And five five is actually a prime number. So a prime number is just a number which like <laughs> uh, the number that goes in it's one and itself, like five. Only one and itself go into it without leaving a remainder, which makes it a prime number. And then ten, we know that it's one, two, five, and ten. And then twenty, we have one. We have two, we have four, we have five, we have ten, and we have twenty. So looking at this, we can see that we have one, it's common in all the numbers, in all the factors of the numbers. And then secondly, we have two is common in ten and twenty. We cannot count it because it is not common in five we have to find factors which are common in all the three numbers i really hope you get that and then we're going to move we have a five which is common so the numbers that are common in all the three numbers are one and five but which one is the highest the highest is five meaning that we're going to write five we're going to take five as our h c f right so we're going to look before you can say what is the highest common factor of the variables you have to check if the the three terms have the same variables if they don't have the same variables it means that you cannot take the same it, it means that you cannot take a, a variable outside the bracket because it is not common among all the numbers and then we're going to look okay we have y here we also have y here but here it is not a y meaning that we we don't take out any variable because we don't have any var any common variable among the numbers then we're going to open our bracket what are we left with five divided by five it's one one and then what are we left with also our variable y so if you only write y only here we won't say it's wrong it is actually right because we know that when a variable doesn't have a number or a coefficient in front of it we know that it is one and then we're going to move on to our second term put down our positive sign 10 divided by 5 2 then our variable don't leave it behind y then plus 20 divided by 5 5 10 15 24 don't forget our variable z see how easy that was so look at this if you took out the y here because it is common in 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 5y and 10y your answer would be wrong why because i want to show you actually with the last time you'll be saying five times for z five y i guess you'll be you'll have your y here then you'll say five y times four z which will give you 20 y z and here you don't have 20 y z that's why every time you take out the the common factors you have to check among all the three numbers not because the two are common it means that you have to take it out they have to be common among all the three <laughs> i really hope that you understood what i was saying so right now 
let's look at question two we have variables only meaning that we may not need our paper <laughs> so we're going to look at this we have variable a if variable a is here in the first term is it here in the second term nope meaning that we already say nope that's not our common factor because it is already not common in the second term okay we have d oh yes d is common in the second and then d is also common in the last meaning that d is our common factor do you have any other common factors no we don't meaning that we open our bracket then what are we left with here d cancels d and then we are left with only a and then i really hope you understand when i say d cancels d i guess we're going to have one here minus the exponent one which will give us zero and then d zero means one and then a times one it's a understood understood <laughs> and then positive sign this is the positive sign i'm taking and then d cancels d and then you're left with b then positive sign d cancels d then we're left with c and then if you want to take this back you just use the distributive property d times a a d d times b b d d times c c d so maybe you're asking yourself why are we starting with uh c b or a rather than starting with d uh when writing those variables we actually prefer writing them using the the order of variables that's why we start with a because a comes before d understood <laughs> yes and then we're moving to the to the third question we're going to check here we have numbers meaning that we have to check the factors we have of we have to find factors of eight factors of eight factors of two what are factors of eight we have one we have two we have four we have eight what are factors of two we have one and we have two what are common factors one is common and two is also common but which one is the highest hcf is equals to two two is our highest common factor meaning that two has to go outside of the bracket now we move on to the variables don't forget the variables so what did i say about variables the least exponent is the is the highest common factor of variables the variable with the least exponent i guess you're going to check okay we have x which is common in both terms but the one that is that has the least exponent is the highest common factor so which one has the least exponent here is x which is x only one x which only x to the exponent one is the highest common factor do you understand what i'm saying x is both common into these two terms x squared is not common into these two terms because on this side it is only one x and then when we are checking this we can see that okay we have found our common factors and we are done now it is the time to open the bracket and write down the remainders so we're going to say 8 divided by 2 which gives us 4 and then x squared divide by x we're going to keep our base the exponents minus each other 2 minus 1 then we're going to be left with x my x to the exponent 1 which is not necessary to write the exponent 1 and then we're going to keep down our positive sign 2 divided by 2 1 and then x divided by x so basically this term is cancelling this term meaning that 2x i can you know that when you say 4 divided by 4 it's 1 so 2x divided by 2x is going to give us 1 
I hope that is clear. I can when you do your normal division, you say four divided by four. How many times does four go into four? It goes once. So how many times does two x go into two x? It goes once without leaving a remainder. Let's go. We're moving on to question number four. Please, when you see those things, don't say, oh, la la. <laughs> I won't be able to do this because they're just easy. It's just your mindset that matters right now. So let's look at question number four. Now you're going to look. Okay, I have two terms. This is the first term and this is the second term. How do you know terms? We know terms that because they're divided by minus and positive sign so we have this minus dividing this two terms so when you're looking at this two terms what is common in this in this two terms you can see that this bracket is common we in the first term we have z squared plus one and in the second term we have z squared plus one meaning that you can only write one bracket because they are common z squared plus one and then you write down what is left in the second bracket which is we are left with 3p and minus 10. this is your answer isn't that easy yet yes it is easy look at this when you have factorized it like this you are still going to get the answer that you'd get like even when you didn't factorize it because 3p would multi would multiply the z squared right and then it would also multiply the one and here it would also multiply them because uh 3p will multiply the z will be multiplied with the z squared 3p will also be multiplied with the positive one and here you'd multiply the negative 10 with the z squared you will also multiply it with the positive one and here also it applies i really hope that you understand what i'm saying i think you have seen this method in the video of distributive property so there's really no need for me to get into detail of it so now we are moving question five you're going to look at this are this bracket okay firstly let's check we have two terms this is the first term the first term is 3y in brackets x minus 1 close brackets plus which divides the two terms open bracket minus x plus 1 close bracket so you're going to look at these two terms what is common with these two terms nothing is common why because of this side our x is positive and this side our x is negative but me i am going to teach you a way in which you can make this brackets uh the same right so every time you see that you can make this brackets the same not only with this type of question like even if here they didn't have the same signs you would be able to make the sign the, the brackets common right so when looking at this question you're going to say, mm, what can I do? What can I do to make this brackets the same? Uh, I'm going to teach you the method. So firstly, we're going to keep our first term. X minus 1. So we want to change this, this bracket so that it can look the same with this other bracket. So as you can see, I've kept my first term so now we w we have to change this bracket so that it can look the same as the first terms bracket so how do we do this we do this by taking out a minus sign outside the bracket so when taking out a minus sign outside the bracket you change all the signs inside so meaning that if we take out a minus sign outside the bracket the x will turn into a positive x and the one will turn into the will turn into minus x why because you've taken out a minus sign so let's apply it so you're going to give down your positive and then to divide to to just like create a wall between the positive and the negative we're going to put a bracket we are taking out the minus sign 
outside the bracket meaning that in inside the bracket we're going to be left with positive x why am i changing the the sign i'm changing the sign because i took out a negative sign so as you can see taking out a negative sign and then when you take out a negative sign you have to put opposite signs to to the to the original ones so that when you say negative times positive it brings you back here so here you have to put an opposite sign to this one which will be minus one and close bracket as you can see when you took out the the negative sign you have to change the the signs of the terms inside the bracket so it's going to be negative times positive which brings you back here negative times positive times negative which brings you back here i really hope you understood this step let me just explain it again when you want to make two brackets the same you have to take out a minus sign outside one bracket that's why i kept this bracket and did nothing to it so i put down my first term and then put down my positive sign and then took out a minus sign outside the bracket when i took out the minus sign outside the bracket i have to change the the signs of the terms inside the bracket you see here i changed that this sign into a positive sign i also change this sign into a negative sign so we're going to arrange arrange these terms into okay they are in the same order so if if they went in the same order as this term you just arrange them into the same order so we're going to fix these two signs these two signs have to multiply each other to give us one sign the ray y open bracket x minus one negative oh positive times negative as you have seen in my distributive property video i've shown you like different types of signs when they multiply each other and what they give you positive times negative it gives us negative and then in our bracket it's not really necessary to write this positive sign because when uh, a variable or a number or a term rather doesn't have a sign in front of it we know that it is positive so we're going to just write our x minus one so now as you can see we have what we have common common brackets meaning that we have we can write down one one bracket only so we're going to write down what is left inside another bracket which is the ray y and a minus minus one why am i saying a minus one because we know that like when a sign or or rather a variable doesn't have doesn't have a number <laughs> doesn't have a number or a coefficient the coefficient is one so and i'm also putting one because one won't be able to affect the the answer or how the variable works because we're just going to say negative one times x is just going to give us negative x negative one times positive times negative one is just going to give us positive one i really hope that you understand that and we're moving on to the last question boo, boo, boo. <laughs> i really hope you guys understand this and you're gaining more knowledge okay let's check this we're going to look at this we're going to first start with the with with finding the highest common factor. Nine factors of nine factors of six factors of fifteen. What are factors of nine? One, three, and nine. Factors of six? One, two, three, and six. Factors of 15, 1, 3, 5, and 15. What is common? 1 is common, 1 is common, 1 is common, 3 is common, 3 is common, 3 is common. But which one is the highest? HCF, 
equals to three. So we can take out a minus three in order for us to practice applying this method again. We can take out a minus three and say a minus three is common. So we're moving to the variables. Okay, we have an x here, we have an x here, but we don't have an x here. Meaning that we cannot take a variable as a common factor. So right now we are moving to the bracket because we are done taking out the common factors. You're going to check negative nine I agree here now we are calculating what is left that's why i'm doing the division negative 9 x squared divided by negative 3 so let's start with the numbers negative or, or signs rather negative divided by negative gives us positive it's there's no need for you to write the positive because we know that when a number doesn't have a sign in front of it it is positive and then 9 divided by 3 is going to give us 3. Then we're just going to keep, us our, keep our x squared because we didn't take out any variable. x squared. And then uh, remember when you took out a minus sign, the signs inside the bracket, inside the, the, the signs that you're now going to use have to be opposite so you're not you're not going to take a positive you're going to take a minus even if you do it with a method of division positive divided by negative it is negative six divided by three two keep our x negative divided by negative it's positive even if you said oh i took out a minus now my sign has to be opposite it will just give us positive 15 divided by 3, 5. Now you're done and you know how to factorize using, oh, you, ha you know how to factorize by taking out the common factor. I really hope this video was helpful and that you understood it so well. And yeah, guys, until the next video, we will be continuing with other forms of factorization. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell me in the comment sections which, which topic you'd like me to cover. And remember, I do not promise to know everything, but I do promise to share and help where I can.